Good morning. Nice to see all of you. We are back in the swing of things with Sunday School. Our midweek programming started up last week. It was a great Wednesday. We had a good turnout for 4.30 worship, a good meal, and it was great to see all the kids back in confirmation and cross-training. And our adult classes were, were well attended. Financial Peace University and the men's book study on the book Wild at Heart. Uh, so we love to see that uh, continue on this week. Uh, it's not too late to join one of those classes if you're if you're sort of a week behind. There's plenty of time to catch up, and uh, I don't know. It feels good to be back in the swing of things personally. Uh, a few announcements here before we get started. There's a Women of Faith event on the 17th. That's Tuesday at 6 p.m. So uh, women, be advised there. There's a time change to 6 p.m. Um, Let's see, potluck and voters meeting, that'll be next Sunday. Uh, everyone in the congregation is invited uh, to join us downstairs after the late service. Uh, there aren't any huge items to vote on. We're not calling another pastor or anything, so it won't be a very long meeting, but we encourage you to come and stay up to date with the ministries of our Redeemer. Uh, bring a dish if you'd like. We'll, we'll get an update on, on the Grace Lutheran School building project and some things like that. Uh, Lutherans for Life dessert banquet, uh, September 29th. You take a look at that. You can sign up on the Ministry Action Board. And, uh, and then a fun announcement. Uh, we are about a month away from our annual trivia night. Uh, we would love for you to be a part of it. Uh, we've, done, we've done different themes over the past few years. We did sort of a costume Halloween theme the past couple years. Uh, before that, we did an Oktoberfest theme. Uh, this year, because it's a fundraiser for our youth group as they look forward to the youth gathering next summer, uh, which will be in New Orleans, it's going to be New Orleans themed. That's going to be fun. New Orleans themed with the food and the decor and maybe a few questions as well. But it's a fundraiser for our youth group. Uh, we'd love for you to get signed up. We'll certainly have more information uh, over the next couple weeks. So maybe start talking to people, maybe forming teams. Uh, it's always a good time. We'd love for you to be a part of it. All right, I think that's all I have for those announcements today. We are celebrating the Lord's Supper. Uh, because it's the third Sunday of the month, we'll distribute communion in that continuous line style. So just follow the line. All right, glad to see everyone here today. God bless us with a beautiful week and a beautiful morning, and, and we're certainly here to thank and praise Him. Let's go ahead and stand and share a Christian greeting, and then we'll sing our opening hymn. You may be seated. We stand as we begin our worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's Word, call upon Him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as His people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking His grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God in His mercy has given His Son to die for you, and for His sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by His authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing the Kyrie followed by the Gloria in Excelsis. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, as you go with us through each day, help us by your strength to serve you in meeting people's needs and in spreading the good news of the gospel. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. We continue with our readings from the Bible. first reading is from Isaiah chapter 50, starting with verse 4. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I turned not backward. I gave my back to those who strike, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I hid not my face from disgrace and spitting. But the Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who is my adversary? Let him come near to me. 
Behold, the Lord God helps me. Who will declare me guilty? Behold, all of them will wear out like a garment. The moth will eat them up. Who among you fears the Lord and obeys the voice of his servant? Let him who walks in darkness and has no light trust in the name of the Lord and, re and rely on God. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading is from James chapter 3, starting with verse 1. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. For we all stumble in many ways, and if anyone does not stumble in what he says, he is a perfect man, able also to bridle his whole body. If we put it bits into the mouths of horses so that they obey us, we guide their whole bodies as well. Look at the ships also. Though they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are guided by a very small rudder wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great things. How great a forest is set ablaze by such a small fire. And the tongue is a fire, a world of unrighteousness. The tongue is set among our members, staining the whole body, setting on fire the entire course of life, and set on fire by hell. For every kind of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature, can be tamed and has been tamed by mankind. But no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With it we bless our Lord and Father, and with it we curse people who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth comes blessing and cursing. My brothers, these are things these things ought not to be. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening both fresh and salt water? Can fig tree, my brothers, bear olives, or a grapevine produce figs? Neither can, you, can a salt pond yield fresh water. This is the word of the Lord. We stand and sing the Alleluia in verse. Gospel according to St. Mark, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. And when they came to the disciples, they saw a great crowd around them, and scribes arguing with them. And immediately all the crowd, when they saw him, were greatly amazed, and ran up to him and greeted him. And he asked them, What are you arguing about with them? And someone from the crowd answered him, Teacher, I brought my son to you, for he has a spirit that makes him mute. And whenever it seizes him, it throws him down, and he foams and grinds his teeth and becomes rigid. So I asked your disciples to cast it out, and they were not able. And he answered them, O oh, faithless generation, how long am I to be with you? How long am I to bear with you? Bring him to me. And they brought the boy to him, and when the spirit saw him, immediately it convulsed the boy, and he fell on the ground and rolled about, foaming at the mouth. And Jesus asked, the, has, asked his father, How long has this been happening to him? And he said, From childhood. And has often cast him into the fire and into water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus said to him, If you can, all things are possible for one who believes. Immediately the father of the child cried out and said, I believe. Help my unbelief. 
And when Jesus saw that a crowd came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, You mute and deaf spirit, I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. And after crying out and convulsing him terribly, it came out. And the boy was like a corpse, so that most of them said, He is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. And when he had entered the house, his disciples asked him privately, Why could we not cast it out? And he said to them, This kind cannot be driven out by anything but prayer. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We continue by confessing our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead in the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. We invite the children to come forward for the children's message. Good morning, boys and girls. How are you today? Good. All right. Today, I have a question for you. I would like you to show me your tongue. Stick it out for me. Mm. All right. Nice. Very, you have very, very nice looking tongues. What do, you, what, what do we use our tongues for? Tasting, licking, eating, talking. Yeah, we use our tongues for all kinds of things. If we did not have a tongue, we'd have a really hard time saying any words. So today we're gonna, we're gonna do a little bit of a challenge and I have a sad face bucket. Hmm, and a happy face bucket. Yay, we're gonna set them right here. So here's our happy face and here is our sad face. Now we use our tongue for talking. I'm using my tongue, my tongue to talk right now, okay? And Jesus wants us to use our tongues to say kind things and to praise him, okay? So I have some things that maybe we have said or we have heard people say, and we're going to see if it's kind and it should go in the happy bucket or if it's unkind and it should go in the sad bucket, okay? So if you think it's kind, maybe give me a thumbs up. And if you think it's unkind, give me a thumbs down. Okay, here's the first one. Wow, you are really good at that. Yeah. That's going to go in the kind bucket. That's really encouraging, isn't it? You are the rudest human on the planet. Oh, that's so unkind. Oh my goodness gracious. Okay. I love Jesus. Yeah, we praise Jesus with our mouth. Okay, here's the next one. You are a bully. Ooh, that can be kind of unkind. 
Well, it kind of could be, but mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But do we want to tell them, like, you're really mean, you're a bully? Right, we should maybe go talk to a teacher about that. That shirt is ugly. Oh, wouldn't that be so unkind? Okay, here's that. You are kind. Yeah. You brighten my day. Okay, one more. You're really bad at building towers. That's unkind. Wow, you guys got them all right. Way to go. So we know you hear what words are kind, what's kind to say, and we know from what was here which words and which phrases are unkind. So Jesus wants us to say the kind things, but do we always say the kind things? No, sometimes the words that come out of our mouth are mean and unkind to others. So what happens when we say unkind things? Yeah, we say we're sorry, we apologize. We say, Jesus, will you forgive me for my unkind words? I am sorry for my unkind words. Please forgive me. Elijah, do you have a question? Okay, what's your question? That, that, yes, you're right. That was a kind thing to say. Yeah. And so we can ask Jesus for help to say kind words and ask for forgiveness when we say unkind things. Yes, Levi. I know. That was so cool. Did I say hi? Was I kind? Okay, good. You were kind too. Okay, so let's remember today. Let's work on using our tongues to say kind things and ask for forgiveness and say we're sorry when we say unkind things, okay? Let's fold our hands and let's say a prayer today. Okay, fold your hands, please. It's time to pray. Thank you. Dear Jesus, help us to use our tongue to say kind words to others. Please forgive me when my words are unkind. I love you, Jesus. Amen. All right, you guys can take a seat.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Growing up, I, uh, I played in a lot of games, whether it was baseball, football, basketball, soccer, and, and I can tell you I've forgotten most of them, at least the details of it, but there's one soccer game that I'll never forget. We lived in uh, suburban Atlanta at the time, and my brother, who's only a year older than I, uh, we were on the same team. And, uh, and it was a rainy day. I remember that. It's important to the story. It was gray, and the grass was wet, and it was kind of slippery out there. And we're playing our game, and my dad's our coach. He's over on the sideline. and I'm probably seven or eight years old. My brother's eight or nine. And uh, we're winning the game, and everything's going as usual. It's fine. My brother's the, the goalkeeper. He's the goalie. And uh, one thing that happens in soccer is if the ball goes past the end line, you get a, a goal kick. Right? You set the ball out there, and then the goalie you know, runs up on it and, and kicks it as far as he can to kind of clear the ball out of our zone. And uh, on this rainy day with slippery grass, my brother, who is just the sweetest, nicest, gentlest, most innocent kid in the world, He's playing goalie, and he, and he takes a step, and he goes to plant his foot to kick the ball, and he slips, and he tops the ball. And out of his poor, sweet little mouth comes a four-letter word that no one knew that he knew. It was just an instinct for him. I don't know where it came from. It's not the way we talked in our house. My parents didn't talk like that. But just this sort of reflexive thing slipped on the grass, missed the ball, and uh, we kind of chuckled a little bit. My dad did not find it funny at all. I pulled my brother right out of the game, to sit on the sideline in the rain. I remember the car ride home, silent, and Got back home, I was scared for my brother, you know. I know my parents were trying to make a point about our words, but I was a little worried for Scott's safety, if I'm being honest. I thought Dad was really mad. And I remember Scott had to do some, some time in the room. I think he was, he was grounded for, for a little while. And, and I remember this, my dad made him write the, the second commandment and its meaning, like, 200 times or something like that. Now, my brother didn't misuse the name of, of the Lord our God, but it was close enough. And so, Dad was trying to drive a point home. Um, and it's the point of today's sermon. Words matter. Words are actually very, very important. We don't always act that way. And oftentimes, and I'm chief of sinner here, i kind of flippant about my words. I'm careless with my words. My words don't always glorify God, but when you read the Scriptures, there's no mistaking it. The words that you speak are incredibly powerful. They're powerful to build up and they're powerful to destroy. And we have to take our words seriously. That's the lesson my parents were trying to teach my brother. Now, in retrospect, it's kind of a funny little story. But... He learned the lesson that day. We grow up and, and we kind of get mixed messages on words. You know, you turn to the Bible, you're going to find time and time again that the words that we speak and the words that we receive are so important. Faith comes through hearing and, and hearing the Word of God. And how do we receive that Word? Oftentimes it's someone speaking it. It's, it's very consequential, our words. But we also grow up and in order to toughen us up, maybe you heard somebody tell you once upon a time that sticks and stones can break your bones, but words can never hurt you. Uh, that's not biblical wisdom. I understand why we say it, because we're out on the schoolyard and someone calls us a bad name. You know, that's not an excuse to haul off and punch them in the teeth. There's a reason they tell us that as kids, but if you've lived for any amount of time and you have any wisdom, you know that words can and do a lot of damage. They can do a lot of damage what I mean to say. They're, they're powerful. They're dangerous. That's what James was talking about in our epistle reading today. He has all sorts of metaphors or analogies for the tongue. You know, the how, even though it's a, it's a small member, 
it's, it's a very, very powerful member of our bodies. You know, you control a horse by putting a bit in its mouth. And you steer this, this animal that's, I don't know, how much does a horse weigh? A thousand pounds or something like that? I don't know. Never weighed a horse. But the thing is, you can, you can direct it by just controlling its mouth. Or you use the analogy of a, the rudder of a ship. This the great grand ship is steered by this tiny little piece of wood. And he talks about how the tongue is like a fire. It has this potential to consume and destroy. And how it's like poison. How it can just, just kill. And, and, he, and he goes on and on and on. And, and James does not have a great outlook about the sinful human capacity for our words to build up. But he has all sorts of warnings for how our words can destroy. And he talks about the life of a Christian, how we can at one time bless the Lord and, and bless other people with our mouth and then in our next breath curse them. And, and he says it, it should not be so. It should not be so. Our words are a very tricky thing. It's all over the Bible. If you read the Proverbs, you'll find that there are dozens and dozens of, of Proverbs about the mouth. You know, Proverbs is a, is, a, is a book of the Bible that's very concerned with wisdom. And so, of course, Solomon's going to talk about how wisdom shows up in our deeds and our actions, but accompanying those deeds and actions, wisdom comes forth in our speaking. What kind of words are we saying? What kind of words are we hearing from others? Words are too important. Jesus talks about our words in the Gospels. Talks about how the words that we say, how they're a reflection of the substance of our hearts. We kind of know a man by looking at his words. You know a woman by listening to her words. What do they have inside? People can kind of charm you with some good words for a while, but eventually their real character will emerge through their speaking as well as their actions. It talks about how our words can condemn us. One of the scariest verses in the Bible is when Jesus talks about having to account for our careless words someday on that day of judgment. The real danger about our words, there, there's no mistaking that in the Bible. And, and you look at the Ten Commandments, it's something Luther wrote about when he explained the ten, the, a couple of the commandments. I talked about the second commandment, you shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. We should fear and love God so that we do not curse or swear, use satanic arts. But we use our words rather to pray, praise, and, and give thanks. Sort of call upon the, the Lord in prayer. God gives us this amazing capacity to speak. I think about that as I raise my children. Some of you know kind of my story, my family, you know, I've, I've got these kids at home. Uh, none of them are really talkers yet. They're all kind of learning. They're, they're autistic, and so they're, they're very speech-delayed, even what you might diagnose as nonverbal, but they work on it, and there's some speech therapy. And, and so where speaking comes naturally to a lot of us, they have to kind of build and build and work and work and work, and it just makes me think about the miracle of language. You know, if you've ever tried to learn another language, especially in your teenage or adult life, you know how hard it is to learn how to speak. And yet God, as these creatures, gives us this amazing capacity to have language, to be able to articulate our thoughts, to be able to share the news, to encourage or discourage one another, to, to praise Him or to insult our neighbor. And it's a really incredible incredible gift that God gives us and yet there's real danger in that gift. It's a gift that we take for granted. It's a gift from God that we misuse. And that's really what the second commandment is about. You know, God gives us this great capacity to speak and instead of using this gift to speak the good words, pray, praise, give thanks, call upon the Lord in our time of trouble, teach one another and to build each other up, we oftentimes use this gift of speech to curse and swear and be vulgar and to tear one another down. 
it ought not be so, as James would say. There's another commandment that deals with it as well, what we number the Eighth Commandment. The different Christians number the commandments differently. You've probably picked up on that. What we call the Eighth Commandment, you shall not bear false witness, has to do with our speaking as well. And sometimes when we talk to our kids about it, it's about just don't tell lies. And that's, that's pretty good. Maybe it's a little more nuanced, bearing false witness. You know, it's about a person's reputation. So we don't tell lies about our neighbor. We don't slander our neighbor. But we support our neighbor, encourage our neighbor. And, and we say everything in the kindest way. That's part of Luther's explanation to that commandment. We explain things and sort of put on the best construction. So you have these two commandments that deal just with the words that we speak. They deal with the human mouth. And we have this great gift from God, but oftentimes it goes misused. And we know this. Like you said, I'm the chief of sinners. I think part of my makeup is that I, I talk too much. It's probably why I'm a pastor, you know. <laughs> a little bit of a sort of a, a disposition to gab and gab. And, and, and sometimes I look at people in my life that I respect a lot and, and they speak less. But, but when they speak, you know, they have something to say. And it's important. And you should tune in and listen to them. They're not wasting their breath. They're not blabbing. They're not gossiping. They're not sort of just talking to hear themselves talk. I talk a little bit too much and I notice that sometimes when I'm angry or I'm excited or I'm trying to be funny or I'm this or that, the, my words can become very careless. And I can say things that do not glorify God. And I don't know what your malady is in your speaking. Maybe you're too negative. Maybe your language is too blue. Maybe you're always complaining instead of giving thanks. Right? Maybe you're critical of others. Whatever it is, there's something in all of us something in all of us that's not quite right when it comes to speaking. That's why we're warned about it in the Bible so many times. That's why we're worried, or why we're warned about it in the commandments. We must tame the tongue. When we come before the Lord on these Sunday mornings, we acknowledge our sin. And I don't know what goes through your head during confession and absolution. You know, sometimes we, we pause and we sort of name our sins before God, or at least we we reflect on our sinful nature. We talk about how we sin in thought, word, and deed. Now, I don't know where your mind goes when you confess your sins before God. It might be your deeds. For me, a lot of times it's my attitudes. But there's no doubt I sin in my speaking every day. And I want you to know that those are sins that Christ died for as well. Christ died for even the sins of our careless words, our ugly words, our demeaning words, our insulting words, our words of ungratefulness. Christ died even for those sins. Be assured of that. He died for all sin. Even those sins of speaking. And we live in a world that doesn't lend, a cre lend as much credence to our words you know, it's a world where we say whatever we want. We use all sorts of language. You know, everything is free because we love free speech. But our words do cost. And we are accountable for them. Make no mistake about that. Your words have a weight to them. Our words have consequences as well. Out there in the world, we act like they don't. We kind of just say anything and we say, what are you going to do about it? But God cares about what you say. So repent of your careless words, your thoughtless words, your ugly words, and know that Christ even died for those sins as well. And as a person who has been forgiven, and that's who you are, you're also a person who is being sanctified day by day. Now you are holy. You are made holy because Christ died for you. He gives you His holiness. So when you stand before God, you do not have to be 
dreading the judgment that's ahead of you. But it's a God who also continues in the work of your righteousness. You've been given the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's a promise that's been made to you. And that Holy Spirit is working in you to turn your sinful words, thoughts, and deeds into righteous words, thoughts, and deeds. Because here's the truth about the power of words. They're not just powerful to destroy and scandalize. They're so powerful in making beautiful things and changing lives for the better. Hopefully you have a story like that. The power of words in the positive. I mean, I have a bunch. I look back and maybe there are some coaches or teachers or friends who, who said things that still leave scars on me, but more than that, I have, I have teachers and friends and coaches and parents and family members who have encouraged me to do things I never would have done without those words of encouragement. Top of that list, have you ever thought about being a pastor? That's my story. It's as simple as that. I went to school and I studied engineering and I wasn't too psyched about it, but that's the path I was on. I went to my parents' congregation back in Arkansas for the summer, you know, went on Sunday mornings while I was working an engineering job and, and the pastor noticed that I had an interest in, you know, I answered a lot of questions in Bible study and I asked questions and he says, you seem to be interested in this. Have you considered being a pastor? And of course, reflexively, I said, no, I'm, you know, I'm studying engineering. I'm not going to do that. But through those words, that belief that he showed, that he expressed, the Holy Spirit worked. The Holy Spirit worked on me. That thought rattled around in my head, and, and I started to ask more questions and investigate you know, the seminary and what it means to be a pastor. And, and because that pastor said those words to me some 11, 12 years ago, I'm here now. And you're here now. And we're having this conversation. It's, it's the power of words. As people who have been forgiven, as people who are being sanctified by the Holy Spirit, day in, day out, let your righteousness be shown. Let it be made manifest in your words. Do you speak as a person who is forgiven? Do you speak as a person who is called to be a witness? Because the world is so, so busy cutting people down with words, making fun of people with words, being vulgar, but we have an opportunity as Christian people to speak differently, to truly be a positive influence in people's lives, to trade in discouragement for encouragement, right? for vulgarity, turn in vulgarity for, for dignity grumbling for, for thanksgiving, gossip. Turn that in to, to build others up and protect other people's reputations. We have these choices with our words day in and day out. And as someone who is forgiven, as someone who has been freed, as someone who has the Holy Spirit dwelling within them, I encourage you, think about your words. They're powerful. They can destroy but they can build up. They can be a poison, but they can be a tonic. So my friends, consider your words. Consider where you've been careless. Repent of those careless words. And pray to the Lord that He gives you the right words to speak. Words of encouragement, words of hope, and above all, words of God's truth. Because this is our great mission. To speak the truth of God's Word, the good news, the Gospel into our world. Into the lives of our children and our children's children. Into the lives of our brothers and sisters and community. There's no powerful word than when we speak God's words. And that's what we are called to do. Watch your mouths. <laughs> I don't mean that as some sort of threat. But to really think about the substance of your words. Because they are powerful. Amen. Please stand. We continue with our prayers. In our prayers this morning, we lift up to God for healing and strength.
Marie Henke, Clarence Olson, and Harold Casty. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord Jesus Christ, you defeat all the powers of evil and darkness. Strengthen us to resist the temptations of Satan. Surround us with your truth and light. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we live in a world torn apart by war and violence. All human-made peace is only temporary, but you have made eternal peace by the blood of your cross. Encourage us by your peace, which passes all understanding. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you have borne our griefs and shared in our sorrows. Bring your comfort to all those who are suffering in grief. Point them to the hope of the resurrection to eternal life with Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, strengthen all those who struggle with addictions, break their bondage, and lead them to get the help they need. Give them the courage to ask for help. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, aid all pastors, teachers, church planters, missionaries, musicians, and servants in your church. Embolden them as they bring your word to your people, so that more and more people may see your light. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, look with favor upon all who are sick, injured, and recovering. Today we pray especially for Marie, Clarence, and Harold. Have mercy upon them and restore them to health according to your wisdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, we commend all these people and situations to your infinite wisdom and power. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, we worship the Lord with our offerings. We continue with the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us in all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore praising you and saying,
Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of all creation, for you've had mercy on us in giving your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment, you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve who ate the forbidden fruit, and you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet in your great mercy, you promised salvation by a second Adam, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and made his cross a life giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in His body and blood. I invite you to stand at this time as we pray the Lord's Prayer. Hear us as we pray in His name and as He has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. This do as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Please be seated.
Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace and joy. Amen. We stand and sing the Nook de Minis. Let us pray. We give thanks to You, Almighty God, that You have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore You that of Your mercy, You would strengthen us through the same in faith toward You and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, Your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with You in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We sing our departing hymn, Lift High the Cross. We'll sing verses 1, 5, and 6.
Well, it's a privilege as always to worship with you, to, to hear God's Word, to receive His sacrament. Uh, adults will have Bible class downstairs, coffee and donuts as usual. Uh, kids, we're, uh, we're back to Sunday school, and so that's very exciting as well. Uh, once again, uh, midweek activities started off strong, but if you didn't quite get around to signing up or if you weren't available last week, it's not too late. Financial Peace University, uh, the, the men's book study is going really well. I think they have eight or nine guys as part of that group already. And uh, Carol's group on prayer is going to be starting up here in a couple weeks as well. So uh, exciting times here at Our Redeemer. Start thinking about trivia night, voters meeting next week. Uh, we're back in full swing. I can feel it. Uh, today's message was about our words. In our epistle reading from James chapter 3, we get a warning. Kind of a, a warning of law without a whole lot of gospel. Uh, we have to recognize that our words are very impactful. Uh, they're powerful. They can do great good. They can also do profound evil as well. So I call, you, call, call on you today to just reflect on your words, reflect on your thinking, repent of those careless words, and remember that you've been entrusted with, with beautiful words to say to others, words of encouragement, and above all, words of the good news, the good news of Jesus Christ. So God bless your speaking uh, this day, this week, and always. I'll greet you in the hallway. God bless you all.